Welcome back to Stormworks Basics Tutorial. This is the Captain. In this tutorial, we'll be making a bearing panel. This is a simple piece of navigation equipment that will allow us to navigate in Stormworks. It will show our bearing, the heading to the waypoint, the distance to the waypoint in our preferred unit, and the estimated time of arrival to that waypoint. So let's get started. So in this panel, we're going to start by using a physics sensor. Now you want to make sure this is facing the correct way. So if you look at the arrow on the floor, we want to line the blue arrow going straight. We have a green arrow going up, and we have a red arrow going to the side. So let's go ahead, and we'll start with that physics sensor, we'll delete that block. Next thing we're going to do, let's go ahead up here to Logic, and we're going to click on Composite. Now, the physics sensor uses a composite. This is something that the devs have been moving towards. Composite allows us to move many pieces of information with just one node. It's composite. They're compositing the information together. And so, as you can see here, they're now numbered. They changed this. They improved it uh, in a couple of ways. One was adding numbers. So this makes it a lot easier for us to find the number we want. So if we look there, we have many channels on this. It goes up to 17. If we did not use composites, if we use these data nodes, we would need 17 nodes in order to do it. With this composite, we just need the one. So that's a great improvement. So next thing we'll do is we'll have a panel here. So I'll type in panel, and let's go ahead and put an instrument panel. So this is how we're going to read it out. There are much more elegant ways to read this out. For example, I use a monitor with Lua in order to read out the bearing on my panels. But we're going to keep this nice and simple. So the first thing we want here is we want the bearing 2. And this is going to give us the heading, so the HDG, the heading to the, to the waypoint we want to go to. So we're going to just keep that as a dial. Now, this is going to be in degrees on the compass. So the compass goes from 0 to 360 degrees. So we want to put in 0 as our minimum value and 360 degrees as our maximum value. We're going to keep that as channel number 1. Next to that, we're going to put distance. Now, I'm going to show you how to use a property drop-down menu. This is going to allow you to be able to change the units to whatever you want. If you want to do it in meters, you can, kilometers, nautical miles, statute miles, uh, whatever you like. Those are the standard ones. That's what we're going to be working with. We'll also do another dial. Uh, we're going to go on this one. Uh, we would want to do zero, and let's figure out, let's do 100. Uh, it doesn't really matter on this, but we'll do 100, uh, because generally we're going to be within 100 kilometers of where we're going in the map. You can change this number, whatever you want, but if it's kilometers, it'll be 100. We could change this to whatever we need it to be. That'll be channel two. Channel three is going to be the ETA. Now, we can change the units here. We won't go into that yet, but we're going to go ahead, and we'll just do uh, zero to 180. And that will be in minutes. You know, if that if that were to be minutes, that would be three hours. So that will be channel three. And channel four we're not going to use, so we're just going to go none for now. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to start getting ready with the uh, microcontroller. So let's just take a blank microcontroller. You can come up here and make your own microcontroller. I just have one that I named blank to start with. And this is actually a pretty simple panel to start. So we're going to go ahead in here, and we'll call it the bearing panel tutorial. And we're going to start widening this out. So we need first a composite node. This is going to be composite input, and this is going to come from our physics sensor. All right, physics sensor. This is the first node. Second node. Next thing we need is we're going to need to put in a keypad of where we where we want to go on the map. So what we need is a number input. This is going to be keypad A, and you'll see why later. Go ahead and we'll copy that. Control C. We'll add another node. This is going to be another number input. And this will be keypad B. All right, we'll go ahead and add another node. And this one will be a composite output this time. And this will be panel. So this is going to go to our panel. So this is going to read out and give us data. So we'll go ahead and we'll shrink that down. That's going to be our panel. Four blocks, one by four. You could do it two by two if you wanted. But we'll do a one by four there. And next thing we'll do is let's go ahead and we'll go inside. All right, so we'll move these down a little bit so we don't spawn on top of stuff. And we're going to put our inputs next to our inputs, so A, B on the keypad. Physics sensor goes over here, and the panel goes over there. All right, so let's go back up. We'll update this. All right, and we'll go ahead and we'll connect some nodes. So we'll go ahead and we'll connect our physics sensor here, and then the panel connects to here. And then the last thing we need is we need our keypad. So let's go ahead and grab that keypad. All right. And I'll actually move this panel here so that it is all cozied up. As you can see, it's pretty compact. All right, we'll go ahead here and we'll look at the data node. And as you can see, we have keypad B, we have output B, that goes there. 
A, and this is output A. That's why they're called A and B. I wish they were called X and Y. It would be a, make a little bit more sense, but they didn't. So let's go ahead and save this. And so we'll go ahead and let's look at the map. On the map, we can right click and we can put waypoints. So for example, we're right here. That's us in the hangar. We can put a waypoint right there. All right, we can then look if we have it activated in the custom menu here as uh, 3D waypoints. We can see it. It's 101 meters away and it's right there. All right, we're going to want to grab our compass. So you can get this uh, physical compass. You can hold as a character. If we look there, it is 140, okay? So this would be our bearing two. So as we move and we look at the target, that is our bearing two. So the bearing to that waypoint, as you can see, as I turn, it turns with it as I look straight at it. So our bearing to the waypoint is 130. So that's what I mean by bearing to. Now, this is something we do in aviation to navigate. We call it bearing to or from. We're not going to get into all that. But this is our bearing to the waypoint. As you can see, we also have a distance. So our gauge is going to read out the bearing to, the distance, and the estimated time arrival. All right, good. Next thing we want to notice in here, if we look down here, we have x, y. All right. And so we have x, which is east, west. So as Let's zoom way in. It's easier to see when you zoom way in. But if we go east-west, you'll notice that the x-coordinate is moving digits faster. Now, I can't perfectly keep my hand straight up and down. But as you can see, we're moving a lot more in the x-coordinate. So east-west is x. So if you zoom way out, that's east. That's west. East-west is our x-coordinate. So that would mean that the y is our north-south. North-south, as you can see, the Y coordinate is moving more. If we go ahead and really quickly, let's figure out what units this is. I already know what units these are in, but I'll show you guys. So if we look right here, what we want to do is we want to take the waypoint. Let's just go and we're going to go in the X coordinate. Remember, X is east west. So we're going to look at our X coordinates. It's 19101. So real simple, we'll just do 19101 minus, and then we're going to go right over where the uh where our little vehicle is there and we'll look it's 19179 so 19179 equals that means it's it comes up with a number of 78 so that means this is 78 meters over to the east so if we walked 78 meters we would be right over that waypoint next thing we want to do is let's do the uh vertical axis the uh, the north south the y so we look at our waypoint first. That's 4763. 4763. And then what we want to do is we want to subtract and we want to put it back on our vehicle. And let's look. It is 4697. 4697 equals that is 66. So this is 66 meters to our south. So that is 66 meters to our south and whatever number that was to our uh, east. That's how far the block is. But what we want is we want the straight line distance. All right. So we'll go ahead and we'll get working on that. Let's go ahead in here. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is this is a formula that you don't need. You don't really, we'll go over some of how it works. You don't need to know all of it. A lot of it's uh, you know trigonometry and some more complex math. You don't need to go into all of that. You just need to know the basics of it. And so as long as you can see the formula, we'll be all set here. All right, so the first formula we're going to work with here, so we want to go to logic gates, and I want to do function, and I want this x, y, z. All right, so we're going to do x, y, z. And we'll put that over there. All right, next thing we'll do here is we'll do a subtract, subtract, and we're going to do two of these. So what we want to do is just like we just did, we subtracted where we were, uh, where we want to go, which is here. So this is the X, and we subtracted the X of the physics sensor, where the vehicle is. And then we subtracted the B, where we want to go on the Y axis, and we want to subtract the axis from here. So let's go ahead in here. Now, this is where confusion can set in because of the way the dev set this up. So let's look at a GPS. So this is how we used to do it before we had the physics sensor. So we had a GPS block. Now, one of the benefits of the physics sensor is it has many blocks in there because it's composite. Notice, the GPS is too wide. Because the devs use these old data nodes, they needed two spaces, so the block needed to be too wide to have the two data nodes. Now we don't need that. We have the one composite. Now, this is where confusion can set in. So let's make sure we don't uh, get confused, and look at this. So the Y coordinates on the GPS match up with the Y coordinates on the map, north, south. The X coordinates on the GPS line up with the X coordinates on the map, which is the east, west. 
it's different on the physics sensor. So this can be a little bit confusing. So uh, you can easily do this by hooking up dials and seeing which numbers match. That's what I've already done to verify it. And so if we look at this, we'll go over the composite input and you'll notice output one, that is the X position. That is still the same. The X is going to be the X. Now the difference is this. If you notice output two is Y position. The Y position is now vertical. That is the altitude, all right? above, I would say, ground level. The Z position is actually our north-south. So let's start talking about this more as north, south, east, west. That will cut down the confusion a little bit. So X position, X is going to be east-west, so number one is east-west. The Z position, the number three, is going to be the north-south. All right, so let's go ahead into the block and let's start working. So what we want to do is we want to take a couple of these uh, composite read numbers, and we'll highlight that, copy it, and paste it. And so channel 1 is X. That's fine. Channel 1 is east-west. Channel 2, all right, or channel 3 rather. Channel 3 is now our north-south. So we have east-west, north-south. East-west, north-south. So what we want to do is we want to take our east-west and put it there. And we want to take our east-west from our vehicle and put it there. So what we're doing is the same thing I just did in the map, right? We took the waypoint and I subtracted where we presently are and it gave us how many meters away we are from that waypoint that we're trying to get to. So really simple there. And we're gonna to wanna to do the same thing over here. So we take the north-south and we're gonna subtract our present north-south from our vehicle. So we're gonna be sitting in our vehicle. This is our waypoint, all right? So that's gonna go in there. Next thing we wanna do, we're going to set up this formula here. So the formula, again, you don't have to know every part of this. Generally, if you see 360, that means it is converting this into a compass setting because there are 360 degrees in the compass. So we want to do parentheses. 360 plus parentheses. Now let's go down to trigonometry. I'm not great at trigonometry, so I pretty much just looked this stuff up. Uh, right here, we have a tan x. That's the arc tangent. So the arc tangent and the arc tangent 2. So we're going to take this, a tan 2. So what we want to do here is we're then going to put in a tan 2, parentheses, parentheses, and in there, we're going to copy exactly what it does. Uh, y, we're going to actually do x comma y, right? x comma y like that, All right? And then next thing we want to do, we want to do divided by, and then we're going to do pi squared, right? Pi squared. All right, and then what we want to do is we want to multiply that times 360. Again, this is getting it ready to be uh, used as a compass. That's going to close the, the first argument there. This is going to close the next argument. And I forgot one thing. We want to add this here. So apologies there. It's 360 plus. So it's 360 plus parentheses a tan 2 xy divided by pi squared times 360 and then what we do here is we do it's going to be the percentage symbol 360 all right and so what this is going to do is this is going to convert this into a heading for us so this is going to give us the heading from where we presently are in our vehicle to the waypoint so we know what heading to turn to to get there so these are our x y so we plug in x and we plug in y so this is x y and this is going to put those in all right and that's now going to give us our bearing too so just as i looked at that waypoint on the map that's what this is going to do so let's go ahead and we'll write it so that we can read it on the dial so we want to go to composite write number we only have three channels so we're going to start with channel one and we're going to go to channel three and we're going to go ahead and plug this in the first node is going to be our bearing our heading to the target the waypoint so let's go ahead and we'll update that updated and let's go ahead and we'll we'll go ahead and I'll put a battery on this and we will plug it all in as well. You can do infinite electricity if you want, but we'll just plug it all in. So we'll just plug this all into the battery. Perfect. As you notice, the physics sensor will need electricity, so that's important. And the keypad as well. So let's go ahead and we'll spawn this. All right. So let's do this first without the without the dial. So right there, as you can see on our compass, 137. As I move to the right. I need to turn to reach it, so now it's 130. So because I'm moving, I have to keep it facing there. As we move, this will automatically make these corrections for us and tell us the very heading to get there, all right? 
So pretty simple. So what we want to do here is we want to go in here. We've already put our waypoint on the map. We right clicked and we put a waypoint. Now if we click on this large keypad, you notice right here we have input waypoint. We're going to press on that. It inputs the numbers 19, 101, 47, 63. If we get out of there, we want to hit submit. That locks it in. Then if we look 19, 101, 47, 63, 19, 101, 47, 63. As you can see, it put that waypoint in. Now let's look at the bearing two heading 130.41. 130. All right, I can move this and push this around. Remember, as we moved, the bearing will change. So we can push this around. Of course, I tipped it over. Shocker there. But let's see if we can read it. Bearing two heading, we can still read it upside down. 122. 122. So as you can see, even with this moving upside down, it still works and it allows us to now see where we're going. All right, so we can now, as I move that, we go to the, I have to find it upside down here, uh, bearing 128.59, 129, bingo. So this system works. It tells us what heading we need to go there. Very simple. Let's go back inside. All right, so we now have a bearing two panel. This tells us where to go. So we're going to continue, and we're next going to go into the distance. So this is also pretty simple here. So what we want to do here is we're going to go back, and we're going to go function. And we want the X, Y, Z. And we're going to go in here, and we're going to go to add-on. And we want to look down here. If we look at LEN X, Y, that's the length of the vector. Now, a vector is a line from where we are to where we want to go. This is going to tell us the length of that line from where we are to our waypoint. So pretty simple. So we want to go ahead up top, and it's going to be LEN parentheses X comma Y parentheses. So that is now our LEN. So that's going to give us our length of vector. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to take the, uh, this is the east-west, and we want to take the north south and plug those in next thing we want to do is we're going to plug it into here okay that's going to be channel two that's our distance so let's go ahead and update spawn and let's take a look at it so we already went over the bearing the bearing should be the same let's double check it as you can see bearing is 130 and let's look at the distance 104 meters 130 102.52 now why is that number smaller because as you can see the physics sensor is a couple meters closer than we are 102.52, 102. So as you can see, this tells us the distance. As if I push it and try not to knock it over again. <laughs> of course, nothing simple. Uh, let's go ahead and distance 95, 95. So as we get closer, that is going to get closer. Now that's in meters, okay? So this is meters. So let's go ahead and before we go into the estimated time of arrival, what we're going to do is we're going to change the units. So this will show you how to use a property. In this case, we're going to do a drop-down, so we'll do property. And we're going to use a drop-down. All right, so we're going to do property drop-down, and we're going to plug it into the Z of this. So we're going to plug it right in there. And we're going to change this up. It's going to be X, Y times Z. All right, so what this is going to do is we're currently reading out in meters. So we know that one kilometer is 1,000 meters. All right, and so... We're going to start working with this. So you might not want to use the meters because the meters get too big, right? You know, if somebody tells you 13,000 meters away, well, that's 13 kilometers. So if you're used to kilometers, that makes a little bit more sense. That's about seven uh, to eight uh, nautical miles, right? So, uh, you know, it's a little bit more in, uh, in statute miles. It might be around eight statute miles. So we're going to type in distance as the property name. And then what we want to do is we want to add a value. And instead of option one, we're going to name this one meters. And we'll actually just do the abbreviation. So M for meters. Now, because this is already in meters, we'll multiply it by one. So that's going to be the distance in meters times one, which will give us meters. Next one, we add another one. This is instead of option two, this is going to be kilometers. All right, kilometers is 0 0.001. So if you need to, all you have to do is uh, look up the conversions on Google. You can see how, you know, uh, it will give you the exact number that you need to put in there. So that's usually what I do when I'm doing some of these conversions. I will just put those up, and that will give me the top uh, number for that. So we'll go add the next one. So next one, I like to do nautical miles. All right, so nautical miles, if I look it up, uh, it is, I just looked up the number now, and we're going to copy it, and I will paste that in there. 
So it's 0.00053995 times the number of meters will give me how many nautical miles that is. All right. Next one, we'll do statute miles. A statute mile is a normal mile that you drive when you're on the road. So that's the difference between a nautical mile and a statute mile. So, for example, if you're in a car, you want to go by statute miles, if miles per hour. Uh, the MPH on a speedometer gauge, that is statute miles. If you're reading something in knots, that is nautical miles. So you want to copy uh, that. I just did a quick Google search. All I put in was how to convert uh, meters to statute miles. And we put in that number. So it's going to multiply it by these. So let's go ahead and we'll update this. All right. And we'll spawn it. It's going to be the same. All right. So now let's say I want to change my units. All right. So we'll plug this in. And we currently should still be in meters. So let's test out meters. 102. 104. As you can see, of course, it's closer. 102. So it's the same. Let's go ahead and go in. Now, the benefit of a drop-down menu is you don't have to go in the microcontroller and find it. You just have to click on the microcontroller. And here we go. Right here it says distance. M, meters. We click on that, and then we go to kilometers. All right, we're going to spawn it again, and we don't have to actually go in the microcontroller to do it. So let's go ahead and we'll enter the keypad, waypoint, click, bingo. 0 0.1 kilometers. 0 0.1 kilometers. Okay, let's actually do something a little bit further away. That will make more sense to us. So if we go to Harrison here, set waypoint, that's Harrison. Okay, if we look at Harrison, that's 13.2 kilometers. 13.2 kilometers. Pretty simple there, right? If we went, let's switch back to meters for a second. Well, that would be 13,200 meters, right? So let's go ahead and enter that in. That's what we expect, 13.2. 13.2. All right, we can switch to nautical miles. We should expect, right, that's about half. So if it's half, we should expect that it's about half of 13, right? 13 should be about half of that. In nautical miles, uh, did I enter it in? I may not have been. Nope, right there, 7.5. 7.5, that's about half. Perfect, because it's 0 0.00053. It's about half. Click over here, and we want to go to statute miles. So that's in there. That's going to be what we want in a car if we're running by miles per hour. As we look, 8.22. A statute mile is shorter than a nautical mile, so it's going to take more to get there, as you can see, 8.22 nautical miles, or statute miles rather, sorry, uh, to get to Harrison. So that's that. Next thing we want to do is ETA. Now there, there's some different ways to do this. Uh, there gonna be, has to be a little bit of smoothing in this, so we'll go through this. So we now have a panel that will tell us what heading to turn to to get to the waypoint. And we also have a drop down menu that will allow us to pick what unit of distance we want to get there. So we know how far it is and we know what heading it is. Now we can determine how long it's going to take us to get there. All right, so the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to set up for the estimated time arrival, ETA. How long is it going to take us to get there? Now, let's say it is one kilometer away and we're going one kilometer an hour. That's going to take us one hour to get there. So pretty simple. So what we want to do here is next, we're going to set up another function and we want the X, Y, Z. All right. Now we start to put this in. Now some of this is just for smoothing. Okay. This smooths out the number. So we're going to go without smoothing to start. Okay. We're going to do parentheses. We're going to do Z divided by negative X. All right. Parentheses. All right. We're going to start with this. All right. So what this is going to do is uh, first thing we're going to do is actually put in a delta. So we're going to go delta. What a delta is, is, let's read it, outputs the difference between the input and the input from the previous tick. So a tick is a unit of time. So each tick, this is going to update. So the delta is essentially is reading the difference between tick one and tick two, and it's comparing it. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this delta and we're going to plug it into here. This is our x. We're dividing z by the tick, the change. So then we're going to want to take the uh, LEN here. And the LEN is going to go, and that's going to actually plug into the Z. All right. So this is going to be the change is the X is going to be di dividing the Z, which is going to be uh, the distance here. So if we know how fast our distance is changing and we know our current distance, we know how fast it's going to take us to get there. We know how each tick, how many how much distance we subtract off, well, we can figure out how long it's going to take us to get there. So let's go, and we're going to actually start with this number here. 
and we'll plug that right into channel three. All right, so we'll just move this down. I'm trying to keep it so you guys can see all these lines. So we'll move them down so the lines are all visible like so. All right, so let's update this. Now, this isn't going to give us very usable information, be, uh, usable numbers, because it's very small. So what I'm going to do here is we will go ahead and we're going to save this. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to put it on a vehicle that will help us test it. So let's go ahead and we're going to load up my electric cart. All right, and all I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a copy of this panel so I don't have to move it again. And we're going to go ahead and I'm going to put this right in the dash. All right, so this is now on the dash. And this will allow me to read my ETA. All right, and all I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and copy the uh, panel value here. So whatever's going to the panel, we're going to connect it to this uh, panel here. So it's going to read us the exact same information that's reading us. All right, so let's go ahead and spawn in there. And we're going to put a waypoint, and we're going to stick it right at the end of the runway. So give us a little something to drive to. And we're going to go ahead and we'll jump up, and we'll press in the keypad the numbers again. And so as you can see, that is a heading of 202. So if we look at our compass, about 202. Uh, distance, 0.21. Whatever unit we left it in there, I can't remember actually what unit we left it in. I think it's statute miles. Uh, ETA is going to be zero. And now it's zero because we're not moving. All right. So let's go ahead and jump in here. And let's watch that ETA. Now, as you can see, that is a pretty unusable number. All right. So we're going to want to convert this into something usable. And generally, we want something like, for example, my preference is minutes. Uh, that's usually pretty easy to work with. For example, if let's say most things in game are going to take us less than an hour to get there. For example, going up to the Arctic is only going to take me generally, even from FJ, about 15 minutes, right? So it'd be 0.25 hours, right? So there's no point in me reading 0.25. I'd rather read 15 minutes. And even if it was going to take us three hours to get there, right, that would be 180 minutes. So we're going to read it in minutes. So as you can see, that will tell us the ETA. One thing, you, uh, cool thing, if you notice, as we drive away from it, it's going to be negative because it's going to take us negative time to get there. And that, so that, I like to leave that in there because if it's negative, it's going to tell us, hey, man, you're going away from it. So there's our distance. You can see our distance is counting down. As you can see, as I change heading, it's going to tell me what heading to go back. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and we'll recall it. Let's click in this, and we want to start working on this to put this in usable data. All right. So the next thing we want to do, so we want to divide it by, so that I believe is reading out seconds. So we're going to divide it by 60. And we're going to update it. And I'll actually show you that a little bit. I did it too quick. So it's uh, Z divided by negative X divided by 60. So that's going to go whatever number that was divided by 60. So let's update that. And let's spawn it. And let's do it again. So let's turn the cart on and let's head out there. So let's watch it now. So as you can see, it comes alive as we move. It's going to do zero when we're not moving. Up, oh, yeah, you know what it's doing? The reason it's reading backwards is I did not press this. So there is a position on the map that's zero, 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 zero is the zero position on the map, and that's what it reads default. So if we look here, as we start going there, look at the units. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Boom. So what unit do we think that is? I would say that's seconds. So it is in seconds. Okay. So that is 60 sec So that was seconds. Now we are currently, let's do it one more time. I can show it to you. We're in seconds. So we'll start turning towards it. There it is. So six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. So that is in seconds. All right. So we'll, well, I, so, again, my preference is to make this into minutes. All right. So let's go ahead and we'll recall this. So presently what we have here is we've already converted into seconds, all right, by dividing by 60. What we can do is now if we wanted to turn it into minutes, what we have to do is divide it by 60 again. So what we want to do is 60 times 60 equals 3,600. So what we would do is we would now divide it by 3,600. So if we divide this value by 3,600, it's going to give us the minutes it's going to take to get there. So let's go ahead and update that. Now, this is a much more usable unit. We can use property values, and we can uh, change it in a moment. Let's jump in the driver's seat here. All right, let's go ahead. We need to input the keypad. Perfect. Let's go ahead and get this going. 
and let's drive towards. So this is going to tell us how many minutes it's going to get there. Now, it should be sub-minutes, right, where it's going to take us less than a minute to get there. It's going to take us 0.2. Each point is going to be 6 seconds. So that's uh, 6 seconds right there. All right, that is 3 seconds. That is bingo. So as you can see, we now have minutes. So pretty simple. Let's put something way far up there. We'll do it right down in line with the runway, way out here. All right, so let's go ahead and update that. All right, so that is, uh, we can read it on the other chart here. That is a 4-4. Four, four. Let's check it. Grab our compass. Yay, 4-4. Four, four. So that works. Distance, 7.39. I forget what units we have it in. I think it's statute miles. ETA, 0, because we're not moving. Let's go ahead and start heading towards it. Now, this is going to be minutes. As you can see, the ETA is going to be about 9 minutes. We're at full speed, 9.6 minutes for us to get to that waypoint. So I like to use it in minutes. I find that to be much more useful. All right. So that's going to give us to the minute, you know, the minute and decimal places. Now, you notice it is all over the place. See how it's going crazy, crazy? All right. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're just going to put in some smoothing. All this is going to do is it's going to make the number not go so crazy because when we stop, the number goes crazy, and we don't want our needle spinning all over town. So we're going to put in something here just to smooth out the number. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on our microcontroller here, and let's actually do the units first for the time, okay? So let's go ahead and do this. Let's go back to function, and what we'll do here is we'll grab this one. This one's the long function here, and so we'll go ahead, and delta is going to go to x. The len is going to go to z, all right? And we're going to go ahead in here. We're going to copy this, control c. We'll go here, control v. So it's really not a huge deal. And we're going to go ahead and we'll put this up to the 3. And we'll delete that. Okay, good. So now what we can do is we can put another property box in here. So we're going to make a property box W. All right, so we'll go ahead and let's just copy this property drop down we just made. And we'll go ahead and select it. So we can actually see what unit we were in. We were in statute miles. It remembers. So as you can see, it was in statute miles. That's what we were running by, which we had a ground vehicle often run in statute miles. So let's go in here. Next, this is going to be ETA unit. All right, so this is going to be the unit of time. We'll actually call it unit of time. Unit of time. Okay, so what we're going to do here is the pretty much the smallest unit that means any to it, anything to us is seconds. So seconds is, what we're going to, is going to be the smallest. So if you remember, we had seconds before, and that's going to be... And so what we're going to do is divide by, so that's going to be 60. So 60 is going to give us seconds. Next, we want minutes. All right, minutes. So minutes is going to be by 3,600. All right. And then if we want to do hours, we need to multiply that by another 60. So it will be 3,600 times 60 is going to give us 216,000. So next one is going to be hours. This is going to be 216,000. Okay. And we'll actually get rid of that one. So we're going to start with seconds, minutes, hours, and that's going to be the same as before. So the next thing we're going to do here is we want to divide it by this right here. So if we look, that is W. So we're going to go to W. We'll highlight that, do W. So it's going to divide it by whatever's here. So let's go back to seconds. Update, spawn, spawn. I move the waypoint, so the waypoint is right in front of us, 102 meters away. Go ahead, and we will click the keypad, waypoint, input it. You, gotta, you have to remember to put the waypoint in, or it's going to read the 00 on the map. So here we go. It is uh, 0.06 statute miles from us. And as you can see, there is our second countdown. Four, three, two, one, and we're there. All right, good. So that's easy. We can change this over. Let's say we want to do from seconds, we want to go to minutes. All right, so let's go test this with minutes. So we're right ahead of it. Uh, we want to put that waypoint in. So enter the waypoint. As you can see, it's only 100 meters away. And we'll head right to it. So let's look. It's uh, 0.06, let's go, and there we go, 0.2, that's 6 seconds, is 0.1, and we have arrived. That's minutes. Hours, as you can imagine, hours are going to be even shorter. So we'll go hours, all right, and we'll spawn it, and we'll put a little bit further. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll go straight down the runway way out here to give us some notion of what hours is going to be. So we'll go ahead and jump on top, hit the keypad for the millionth time, 
But again, this kind of testing helps you understand how this works. So it's currently 4.45 uh, statute miles away. And once we start heading towards it, it will start counting down. We're 0.1 hours from there, right? So that's six minutes. So 0.1 hours is about six minutes. 0.9 is a little bit less than six minutes, all right? So that makes sense, does it not? All right, good. So let's grab this. So as you can see, we can quickly and easily change it. Now, my personal preference, again, these are my personal preferences. Do it how you like it. For example, meters is not all that useful. If you were walking, let's say you had a very slow vehicle, meters might be interesting to you. Kilometers, if you are used to kilometers. Uh, nautical miles, what I use for boats and aircraft. And then statute miles is what I use for land vehicles. Units of time, I find minutes to be the most useful because the distances in game are so short. For example, if I were to fly, let's say we actually had 300 nautical mile distances in game and I was going 150 nautical miles, it would take us two hours, then it would take us 1.9 hours. That makes reasonable sense, but I still prefer minutes. I would rather see if it's going to take two hours, that would be 120 minutes. But you can change these using these property without having to change the formulas. So that's great. All right, so the last thing we want to do here is we want to smooth this out. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take the end result here and we want to plug it back into Y. I had left that open. And so next we want to do here is we want to do 0 0.09 times Y. All right, so that's uh, 0 0.09 times Y. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to add 0 0.01. And we're going to multiply that back. And this is going to smooth that dial out a little bit. Now, we'll still get some flickering when we're stopped. We can also fix that. But this is going to smooth us out when we're uh, moving. So let's go ahead and update that. Spawn it. And let's go ahead. We'll enter in the waypoint. And we'll drive down there. Now, the needle will be a little bit rough when we first start, but it will be more smooth during the trip. And then we'll be able to smooth it out when we're stationary. When we're stationary, that's going to go crazy because we're moving tiny fractions at a time. And so it's going to try to read that into tiny little decimal places. So as you can see, it's nice and smooth. Now when we stop, it's going to go a little bit nuts. All right. So next we want to fix that. But as you can see, it was smoother because of that smoothing step. So the last thing we want to do here is we want to look at our physics sensor again. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go logic. And we're going to want to click on the composite, and we'll click on the uh, composite output. Now, let's go ahead and let's find out what speed we're going. All right, so we can do a test. We'll do a little test first here. So we have the, if you look at starting at 7, we have linear velocity x, linear velocity y, and linear velocity z. Okay, let's figure these out. I already know which one it is, but if you're having problems with this, I highly recommend dials are your friend. I have infinite electricity on, so I don't need to plug these in electricity, but let's go ahead and plug in three of these. All right, so we have three of those in there. And what we want to do here is I'm going to make a, just a quick super duper microcontroller. Again, this is something I recommend you do if you're struggling figuring out which of these nodes in the physics sensor it's doing. You can just go like this. So we'll go logic, add, add, add. I'll actually do one more. And so it's going to be the first one we're going to start with here is going to be the composite. Input, that's going to be physics sensor. Next one is going to be the uh, number output. That's going to be X. So this is all linear speed. Uh, then what we want to do is we want to do Y, number, output, Y. And then the last one is going to be the number output, and this is going to be Z. Now, you could do this with, remember how I told you the Z axis is actually our uh, north-south. If you weren't sure, you could actually do this type of method to be able to figure that out. So that's how I figured it out. Went and just did something simple like this. So really simple here. It starts with 7. It's 7, 8, 9. So we're going to line them up X, Y, Z. That's the order they are. That We then want to read the number, and we're going to do 7, 8, 9. And it'll be 7, 8, 9. And this will read out the numbers. Now, we believe I have a speedometer on the vehicle itself. And so that will uh, show us what we're doing there. So this is 9, and this one's 8. All right, we'll plug these in. Now we can very simply with some dials, we can tell which one is the appropriate linear speed. Now the linear speeds here are going to be to the side, straight in front of us. Straight in front of us is going to give us our vehicle speed. To the side is going to give us our angular speed, our sideways speed. 
and the vertical one is going to give us our vertical speed. So again, if you want to do a vertical speed for an airplane, you could use the vertical one. So the only one that's going to have any real appreciable movement is the one that's straight in front of us. We'll get a little bit of movement as we bounce up and down. We'll get a little bit of movement to the side, but the one that has a lot of movement, that tells us that's the linear speed we're looking for. Then we'll plug in the physics sensor, and we'll plug these all in. So I'll just label them here, so it'll be X, Y, and Z. And so whichever one acts the most, that one's going to be the linear speed we want. So X, Y, and Z. Let's go ahead and we'll do a little test on that too. So we'll jump in here, main power, parking brake off. Now let's look at them. One of them is moving like crazy, and it's the one that I've already figured out was Z. Z is our linear speed in meters per second forward. So we're going about 40 miles an hour, 20 meters per second. These here are going to be our angulars. So likely... Uh, this one is probably angular, and that one's probably vertical. So Z is the axis we want. So that's all we need to figure out with that one. So when in doubt, just make a quick little rig like that, and you can quickly figure these things out. So it's the Z uh, for linear speed. So if, again, let's look at logic. Let's go there. And if we see there, we have the uh, linear velocity X, linear velocity Y, linear velocity z all right so now that we know that channel 9 is the linear speed we want we're going to go ahead and we'll put in channel 9 so we'll do that 9 we'll read the number we'll go plug that in from the physics sensor next we want is a numerical switch box all right and this is going to switch it so what we need is a condition for it to switch it so we're going to do greater than and we're going to do this by speed you can do this other ways but this is kind of uh, my preferred way to do it so if my speed is greater than a certain number it's going to flip this and read what we want. So that's going to go up here. Now, if you don't fill it out, as you can see, I don't have it filled out here. That's a zero. It defaults a zero. So what's going to happen is it's going to read a zero out until we go fast enough that it actually reads us a number. So we'll plug that back into channel three. And what I'm going to do is a property number. This will allow us to fill this out. So what we can do here is this is going to be the ETA zero. So as long as it's greater than this number we enter in, it's going to read out our ETA. If it's lower than that number, it's not. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to just put in 0.1. That's 0.1 meters per second. And it's going to start to read us our ETA. If we're slower than that, it will just read us a zero. All right. So let's go ahead and update. And we'll confirm. And we'll go ahead and we will spawn. All right. So we can uh, go ahead and we will jump in the seat. Let's put in the waypoint. All right, now if you notice here, we are sitting stationary, it's reading zero. It's going to continue to read zero because we're not moving. As soon as we start moving, you'll notice it starts to read out the value. All right, now it's going to read negative because we're going away from the waypoint. As we go positive, as you can see, it's reading the waypoint. Now, remember last time when we stopped, it was very jittery and the needle was bouncing up and down, up and down. As we stop now, stop, bingo. It's going to read our zero. So it gave us one little flicker, and it reads zero. Now we don't get that annoying flicker. Start gently going forward. As you notice, it will start to read the number. It's readable. It's not flickering. So that is all about just getting that needle to stop flickering. Very simple. There we go. One flicker, and it's done. So this will be in the workshops. So you guys can use this on your builds. I just ask that if you do use uh, something that I've made in your builds, you just credit me as Captain Cockrells in the credits. And I hope you guys found this informative, and I'll see you in the next one.